Welcome back, Red Devil fans, Red Devil family, to the second episode, or I guess you could call it first episode if you want to call the first one a preview of Speak of the Devils, sponsored by The Grazery. If you're in Carlisle, make sure to check out The Grazery. Anyway, we have a lot in store today. We have a, our first guest on the podcast today and a couple other segments, a couple fun segments. Uh, you know, we're really excited to get the ball rolling here on our first official episode. And yeah, so we're just going to get into it. Yeah, that's right. Our first guest today is going to be none other than Tommy Kuwiti, class of 20. He was a pitcher uh, for the Red Devil baseball team and my teammate and friend. We're going to get him on the show a little later and we're going to we're going to just bombard him with questions about how he's doing, uh, about what his experience was at Dickinson as a recent alum. And uh, I think it's gonna be great. After Tommy, we're going to jump into kind of a little elaboration, talk about what he mentioned and things he brought up. And then we're going to do a little fun segment for each of us and get a hot take from me, top five from Sam, and then a uh, questionable thing in sports from Dom. And now before we get into the rest of our content, the second and uh, third and fourth segment, there's definitely something we need to talk about and bring up, something that's affecting you know, our entire country and the sports world, um, which is mainly what we talk about here. And obviously that is uh, – racial injustice and all that's been going on in our country. Um, it came up real big in the sports world when, you know, every sport pretty much that's playing right now took, took it upon themselves to kind of sit out uh, for a little while last week. And I think that it's important, especially since we're not at school to have these kind of talks. Um, they're not the easiest. It's tough discourse, um, but school and locker rooms and all kinds of stuff is where a lot of those conversations were happening. And when we can't have those, um, got to find a place for them. And um, I think that's the biggest way to make progress and understand each other is by bringing up these conversations and talking about them. Yeah, for so running the Speak of the Devils podcast, it's obviously about connecting the community. And that's, it goes beyond sports. It goes beyond, you know, what we do and what we talk about day to day. Sports can kind of be an escape sometimes, but I don't think we realize how really powerful it is and how many people invest a lot of time into it and just the viewership that it gets. And as you've seen in the NBA, uh, you know, there's been a lot of talks. Of, there was some talks about not finishing out the season, the NBA to, or the, I'm sorry, the NHL took a few steps back and it just really puts things into perspective because, you know, there's a lot of hardworking people that go to work and work their day jobs. And then they, you know, they look forward to coming home and watching sports. And when it's not there, it's clearly because of an important cause. And this is a serious cause. And we want to be able to talk about that. We want to, we want this to be also an outlet to reach out to us. Uh, if you think there's anything we can do, if there's anything you can do, any, any that anything that any of you guys want to do uh, to help us become more educated, um, that we can educate more people, uh, please reach out to us because, you know, this is a place where, uh, we can all talk as a community. Um, we're all here because we love Red Devil Athletics and we want to make uh, Red Devil Sports. We wanted to make it known that, you know, we we care about everybody and we want to make a positive change uh, everywhere. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it's really important that we uh, we talk about all this, all this stuff that's going on in our country because uh, now we have the platform uh, to do it just like those athletes uh, with the NBA, the MLB, the NHL. All, all of these athletes had the platforms to do, to do good in their communities. And uh, now we have the platform to do so in our, in our community. So I think it's really important that we, that we talk about these things and have, di have a dialogue with our community and have dialogue between ourselves to just make sure that we're all educated about what's going on. Um, obviously police brutality is not okay. Like there are things that are happening to black people across the country that are, it's, it's insanely tough to talk about, but at the same time, we got to do it. So it's, it's just one of those things that we have to take it upon ourselves. Uh, we are, we are all very privileged here on this podcast. We have, we have a lot of, we have a lot of different things that, you know, a lot of people that don't look like us have, like we, we don't have to worry about um, police coming into our, coming into our homes or coming into our cars, like for, for doing absolutely nothing. Like it's, it's, it's a very terrible thing to do um, as a, as a cop and we've seen it for a we're for, we've seen it for too long now and it and it's got to stop and we we got to start using our platforms as as privileged people to uh to uh put an end to it 
Yeah, absolutely. We are extremely privileged in not having to deal with that. But I think the biggest thing is that, especially in not having those conversations, we have to get to the point that we, we don't necessarily understand what it's like. I mean, we can see the videos and the pictures that are coming up and read all we want, but unless those discourses are happening, it's tough for us to truly understand what's going on and all that kind of stuff. And just kind of bringing it back to the sports world, you know, I feel like at all levels, sports kind of brings us together, no matter what you look like, who you are, any of that, even in the locker room, all that sports can do that. And sports in terms of watching it, even in playing too, can heal. And I think what the team's taking the game off or, you know, thinking of canceling the season we're trying to get after last week is that, when you're playing sports, playing sports is a way to heal, a way to distract, all that kind of stuff. And it almost seems like maybe they were considering whether now is not the time to play. Now is not the time for healing since the wound is still open. And some might even say the wound's still opening because things really aren't changing just yet. Right. I think we are taking the right steps, though, especially as a program. We have had football team, we've had the pleasure of not, not even the, well, we had the pleasure of listening to Jen Fry speak uh, as well as Sam, I know you did. And there were over 300 Red Devil athletes on that webinar uh, yeah. where it was really a place to talk about, you know, what we were feeling uh, first about our seasons that have been canceled or postponed, uh, you know, and then about just like some of the things that have been going on the news that we all see and that we saw a couple months ago with George Floyd. And now we're seeing it again. And we also had a couple, or as I would say about a month ago, we had a team meeting as a football team to, it was kind of like an open forum, you know, to say, this was shortly after George Floyd, uh, just to say what, what, what was on our minds, what we had been seeing. Uh, and we were lucky enough to have some of the, uh, the black student athletes on our team kind of lead the discussion. And, you know, you can, you can see it all, you can see it all you want and, you know, you can, do this, that, and the other, but until you hear a story from someone that you're with every day that you're spending hours upon hours a week with and hear the stories that they've said, they're not making that up. Like that's, that's real stuff. And for me, like that really hit home. Like when I heard some of my teammates and the awful things that they, that they've had to deal with, not just with cops, but just with uh, racism that's alive around the country, uh, I really put into perspective and it was a really great conversation for all of us to then, you know, kind of, it brought us closer as a team and we've continued to have these conversations um, every couple of weeks. And I think we're making great progress as a team, as I know a lot of other teams on campus are, and I think we're taking the right steps. Yeah, we had a, we had a similar meeting. Um, not to, I don't think to the degree of yours, Tom, we, we don't have a lot of minorities represented on our team. Um, but I think that we, we, we all sat down and we had a, our captains led the discussion and um, we just kind of talked about what we were seeing, uh, what we can do to help. I know there's a bunch of different organizations that, um, that you can donate to, to help the black lives matter movement. Um, so we, we got together and we decided that as a team, we were going to all, we were all going to donate um, to some, like a, a cause of our choice. And uh, we did that. And it was, um, it was, it was good. You know, we had a, we had a great conversation, a lot of, I learned a lot. I know a bunch of my teammates learned a lot too. And even some of the kids that, you know, are always active in social justice and stuff. I know one of my teammates, Luke Jackson, is really good about, you know, going to going to a bunch of meetings and stuff like for uh, social and de- social justice and injustice and stuff. So he, he was very helpful in, in leading that. Uh, he's, he's a great guy. And um, I learned a lot. And it was, um, you know, it was good. It was definitely a tough conversation to have. Uh, especially as we, we were all, we were, we're all very privileged and it's, um, it's, it's hard to see something like that go on and not, not be able to do that much about it. You know, like it's, but like we all, we all have to do what we can. It's basically what I'm trying to get out here. That's, that's, that's the bottom line. No, I a hundred percent agree. And going on the doing what you can thing, obviously not being at school and not being in those settings where it's very easy to have those kind of, or not easy because it's never easy to talk about this, but easier to engage in those kind of discussions. Um, just being at work, there was a guy I work with, his name's Tone, and um, I approached him recently and just wanted to talk about it because um, 
I haven't had any chance to really discuss with anyone what it's about, what it's like, and just hearing the stories he tell, like you guys mentioned, just hearing the stories firsthand of the kind of stuff that they've dealt with, um, really shed light on kind of what the understanding is. I also wanted to ask him, like, how do you talk about this topic in the right way? Because it's not easy, but it's something that needs to be done. It's something we all have to do. And it really comes down to identifying, obviously, there is too much hate in this country, um, whether you like it or not. It's just the way it is. And they kind of need to identify why it's there, why it's been there for so long and kind of figure out, because it's not a matter of right versus left. It's not a political issue. It's not any of that. It's a human rights issue. It's, it's much more than a political issue. I think that's the biggest thing that I think is exactly. a lot of people are missing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, I know what you said there, Sam, is basically like the, the bottom line is it's not, whether you're you lean right or you lean left it's, it's not about politics it's about it's about being a human being you know it's about you know recognizing that there are different people than you out there in the world and you have no idea what they go through and now we're now like we've seen all this police brutality against black people it's 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 appalling and we gotta we have to recognize that there's that that, that, that is not okay and that we have to we have to as privileged people like we have to and as humans even we have to we have to do something about it. And it's, and it starts with these conversations right here. Yeah. And you know, like we said, we're not perfect. You might not agree, or we might not be saying the right things, uh, you know, all the time again, we're, but we're, we're doing our best. We're doing what we can here because we truly believe that this is a platform that we're lucky enough to voice our opinion and bring some awareness to the community. And obviously the community is not always going to be united on everything but you know one thing we can all we one thing we all can all get behind is like we all wear the red every day uh you know we all root for each other we all support each other and so that's what we're doing here and you know again if we if you think we might have said the wrong thing here or you want to educate us or you know you just have something on your mind or you, you know you just need somebody to talk to like this is reach out to us like we're on social media um we're easy to find. We're mm -hmm. like on for Red Devil, Red Devil Sports Network uh, page, Dickinson Athletic page, all of our personal pages. You can find them. Like, reach out to us. We're like we want to be an outlet, but we're also learning. Like, we're learning as we go here. So, and we're lucky enough to have a diverse group at Dickinson, mm -hmm. where from different cultures, backgrounds, um, you know, regions, and you know, we're all just trying to understand each other as best we can, and you know, make this place a better make this world a better place. There's something that, um, an idea that true knowledge is knowing what you do not know. And I think that couldn't be more true than with this topic, especially for white people who truly could not be more unaware or ignorant in a lot of these situations. And I think that's another one of the big issues is just ignorance and not knowing um, until now, until it's being brought to light. And the fact that it took this long is obviously an issue, another issue we have to address. But I don't know if you guys were watching the NBA last night and the Nuggets and the Jazz game. Um, Donovan Mitchell's post-game um, interview lost a heartbreaker by two points. And the first thing he said, I'm going to read the quote, um, is, I know I'm probably going to go back there and cry again, but this is a game. People lost their family members to police brutality and racism. And I can only imagine. I wanted to say that. I wanted to get that out there because that's what I'm feeling right now. And there's nothing compared to that. And I think that the fact that he thought to bring that up immediately after losing and being eliminated from the playoff, despite what was arguably one of the best individual performances in first round or in playoff history really resonates with how serious this issue and how personal it is to him and many of the other athletes who get, have the both have the privilege of playing the sport, but just because they're privileged, just because they make a lot of money because their sport doesn't mean they're not being impacted by this. Um, and even at the college level, just mm -hmm. because there's athletes that maybe they seem like they're popular or whatever, they have a ton going for them in the right direction, doesn't mean that these issues are not affecting them. I agree. Well, we welcome any and all feedback. We need your honesty. And most of all, you know, we want to know how we can make a difference and continue to bring the community together and raise awareness. So, you know, thank you for listening to this right now. Uh, we're going to get into some other segments, but you know, this was, this is very crucial that we, yeah. 
we're, we're not doing this just to do it. Like we, we truly believe in this and we truly believe that we have a strong community behind us uh, that we're, you know, we're going to be able to make some positive change and especially on campus, you know, whenever that may be when we get back, but you know, we're really excited about uh, where we can go and uh, the positive change that we think we can foster throughout the, through the show. Coming back here for the second segment, got to give a shout out to the Grazery, Healthy Not Boring. That's not just the motto of the Grazery, but it is also their promise to you. Visit Grazery today and indulge on fresh Mediterranean-inspired salads, sandwiches, and soups, among other great options on a menu that serves both breakfast and lunch. Eat in or take out. No reservation needed here, so hurry on down to 156 West High Street, just yards from the campus, and enjoy a fresh and healthy meal today. Okay, for our second segment today and our first official guest on Speak of the Devils, I want to welcome on our guy, Tommy Coity, former all-conference pitcher at, pitcher at Dickinson College, who is now using his fifth year of eligibility to play baseball at UMass Amherst. Tommy, welcome to the show, brother. Good to see you. Thank you so much for having me, guys. And before we get started, just want to say it's obviously some really tough times not being on campus, but uh, I think you guys are doing a really good job with this podcast. Well, appreciate appreciate that, brother. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a uh, best way to kind of, you know, fill in the void. And I know it's something we all want to do. And how does it feel to be our first guest? It's cool. I mean, to be honest, I was kind of expecting you guys to reach out to me when I saw you guys were starting this up. <laughs> well, I mean, you were in RDSN, so. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Yeah, it's only right. So, yeah, pumped to have you on, bro. All right. You want to just kind of jump into it? Um, we'll talk about kind of, well, I guess we'll go roughly in chronological order. I guess at the beginning, we'll start with what it was like when you initially heard that you were kind of losing your senior season and you didn't know about the extra year of eligibility yet. Yeah, it was uh, very stressful. I mean, it was, it was, uh, it was that one day, I think it was a Wednesday where, um, you know, Rudy Gobert had it in the NBA shut down. Tom Hanks came out with it. Um, that was kind of like the day where I started to get a feel that our season was just getting canceled and it was our off day. So, you know, everyone was on their phones the whole time trying to figure out what was going on. I was texting four of my buddies from like around the conference, just trying to see like what they were hearing and stuff. But um, it was also, you know, we didn't really know a lot about uh, coronavirus and all the data and everything behind it. And as I started to learn more and I learned about the incubation period, I started to realize I was like, there's no way the rest of the season is going to happen. Um, I kind of started to realize it was it down there. You know, 100%. And when it comes down to it, what kind of was going through your mind when you were in that transition period, going home, not having any semblance of a senior season anymore yet? Yeah, it's tough because um, I was actually hurt this year. Uh, I had some, I had a strain in my UCL, which is a ligament in my elbow. And so I wasn't really able to throw it all. And I was working my way, getting towards uh, getting back on the field. And um, it was, it was tough. I didn't really know what to think. And, um, you know, following going home, like it just, it really took a while to sink in. And I think that was the same way with a lot of my teammates. Cause you know, a lot of careers were cut short right there. A lot of uh, fellow spring athletes were in the same boat and uh, it's just, it was pretty difficult to take in at first. Yeah. So how far, like, you know, talking about like, it was kind of a shock, and, you know, you didn't really know where to go from there. You didn't know, not only did you not know where to go, but like nobody else really knew what to go, where to go either. Once you found out that you got your eligibility back, how long did it take for you to start talking to schools? Uh, was it a lot of, was it more schools reaching out to you? You reaching out to them? Uh, Coach Hansen, uh, was he reaching out to schools? You know, how was that process for you? It was kind of like going through the recruiting process all over again. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so, a couple weeks into quarantine, there was actually a professional independent team that called me and um, they kind of talked about their organization and, and the stuff that they were doing out there. And I wasn't very, not to knock them, but I wasn't very interested in it. It was kind of low level independent ball, um, not a lot of benefits, not a lot of pay. And um, so I started throwing again over quarantine and I was going to, I was planning on going out to try out for their team out in Arizona because they invited me out to spring training. And um, Coach Hansen called me and he told me, hey, Friday's the last day to withdraw from a class if you want to come back and play for Dickinson next year. And I was like, I was, I was like thinking about it. I was like, yeah, like it would be fun, but um, just not having a grad program at Dickinson unless it was the law school, um, there were very few options. So he told me, he's like, hey, if you want to play in grad school, uh, I'd be willing to talk to a lot of coaches, uh, you know, make a bunch of calls. And uh, it kind of worked out well. It, it, 
uh, it worked really fast. I was, I was committed in under two weeks of being on the portal. Um, but it was a lot of research and, uh, definitely I was looking for something pretty specific with my sports management program. Um, so it was something pretty specific and there's only so many schools that uh, have sports management. Yeah. Tommy, uh, tell me about, um, your, the, the way that UMass is going to be uh, handling this year as far as like online classes or, and then, uh, bring, bring the, uh, the athletic aspect into that as well. Yeah, it's difficult. So in June, I want to say middle of June, we got an email that said that we were going to have everybody back on campus. Classes were going to be online, but um, everybody's allowed to be on campus. And similar to a lot of universities, things change because you want to you want to wait and see how things are going. Um, and unfortunately, we got a call middle of August uh, saying it doesn't matter. The classes are online. Like we're not going to let anybody come back to campus unless you have a lab that you're required to be on campus for. Um, so we were hoping we were going to be able to take online classes and still have, you know, lifts and practices and stuff in some limited, uh, setting, but it just didn't work out. So we're going to be home for the fall training. I know I have some teammates that are in Amherst, uh, working out, but we're not getting access to the weight room, strength coaches, practices and lifts. So it's, uh, maybe more beneficial to just train at home. All right. Yeah. I know what's called. I know Dickinson actually got that same kind of email transition thing where we thought exactly, we were going yeah. back and then they ended up changing their mind, which is so far from what we're seeing from other schools, it was probably the right decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Like, I know I was, I was pretty upset. Like I know when we got that call, like, cause it was pretty recent, like, or it was, it was more recent than like, we didn't get a lot of notice is what I'm trying to say basically is um, but I think that's kind of just been like the, the story of the pandemic is, you know, you kind of got to kind of just have to roll with the punches and, you know, see, see where it's going to take you. Uh, Tommy, I got another question for you for as far as your um, major in grad school. What, what is that, by the way, what is your major for, so for Amherst? I'm a, on a one year master's program for sports management. Uh, it's I'm taking classes at the Eisenberg school of management at UMass. Very cool. Very cool. And then, uh, so what does that entail as far as online classes? Do you, are you taking a, a lot of, uh, like seminars or is it, uh, more of a, uh, structured, uh, kind of, kind of schedule? Uh, yeah. So I'm taking, I guess it's technically six classes. Um, five of them are, you know, lecture like discussion based. Uh, and then one, I actually just got off it 10 minutes ago was my seminar. So we were, you know, we we're going over cover letter resume kind of stuff. Uh, what what you looking for that? Yeah, it's so it, I mean, it's got to be it's got to be completely different. Just that quick turnaround. You never really had that like moment of closure uh, from Dickinson. It's obviously a place that meant a lot to you. You guys made incredible strides uh, throughout the time you, uh, that you were there. And by the time like you left, but you know, there wasn't really you didn't get to finish your senior season. You didn't really get to close the door on Dickinson. And I mean, granted, if you would have closed the door on Dickinson, you wouldn't be at uh, you might not be at UMass right now playing baseball. So, you know, that's, you go from one, you go from playing D3 baseball to a master's program playing D1 baseball. Uh, what do you think, what do you think the biggest challenge is going to be going from like a, a smaller school, smaller D3 school to like, you know, like a, a bigger D1 school? Um, I think the biggest challenge is going to be more of like a mental aspect than a physical. Um, I think it's going to be more about, you know, we're not having a fall semester. How am I going to be able to bond with these underclassmen that I have no idea who they are? Um, they don't even know who I am. How am I going to get to spring and, you know, get on the field in three weeks um, without knowing who these guys are? So I think a lot of that's going to come in these Zoom calls in the next few months, just over, over Zoom and just talking and getting to know the guys. Um, but I would say definitely gelling with the guys at first and getting to know them is uh, probably going to be the biggest challenge. Who we'll jump on and say, like, I know you weren't the only one on your team to use that extra year of eligibility. Was there any conversations with you and your other teammates who decided to make that same decision? Uh, yeah, so Ethan Collins is going to play at uh, University of New Mexico. Um, I did have some discussions with guys. I know before we um, came back up north from our Florida trip, there were four, uh, well, me included, there were three other seniors uh, that were looking to possibly use their other year of eligibility or just play somewhere in general. Um, but only Ethan went through with it. 
No, I, I do want to ask too. I know we kind of touched on it a little bit, but I would say why you mass, and then again, why Division One? Like, what made you make that decision there? Yeah. So when I started to email schools, it was a lot of general research. You know, which schools have sports management programs. I kind of created a list of schools that had a good rep, obviously uh, schools that are nearby, and schools that play competitive baseball. Uh, playing Division One baseball wasn't really a priority to me. Um, I had actually talked to a couple of Division Three schools in the process, um, but uh, it was more about the academic fit than anything else. Yeah, here, and I think, uh, you know, for me, I just had my senior season canceled as well, you know, hoping for a spring semester uh, or spring season. Uh, anyway, there's, you know, there's questions. There's a lot of – it's not just me. It's, it's, all, it's all fall sports. Uh, so like there, but there is that year of eligibility again. And so there, you know, there's, I think there's a lot of people at Dickinson and across the country right now that are thinking, okay, you know, is it, is it really worth it? Cause it's hard. Like we're, we're D3. We're not getting a full athletic scholarship. And, you know, a lot of people who are playing D3, if they go somewhere to get their masters, it's going to be hard to walk on to like a, a D2 or a D1 team where, and like, whereas a D3 team also like these, it, it's an, it's also an established program. It's going to be hard to walk into one of those programs for one year. Uh, it was, is there any advice you could give to anybody who's thinking about, uh, you know, possibly taking their fifth year and playing? Yeah, absolutely. I would definitely say use every single resource that you have. Like I talked to so many different coaches before just, like making a decision, just letting them know my situation, just coaches over the years, pitching coaches. Um, I must have talked to at least six or different, six or seven different coaches and they all kind of helped guide me. And honestly, like I couldn't have been happier with how it worked out. Um, with UMass specifically, it worked out because their coach actually recruited me out of high school, which is a pretty funny story. And even funnier than that, he, when I was doing my official visit at Dickinson as a senior in high school, he actually called me when I was in the cafeteria when I was basically going to tell him I was going to Dickinson and he used to be the head coach at Washington college, which is in the Centennial conference. So um, he had already seen me play and he, you know, we had had several phone calls. So uh, we were familiar with each other. So it kind of worked out pretty well like that. Yeah. I want to uh, bring it back into your time at Dickinson real quick. Uh, I just want to know what was your, what was your biggest takeaway from Dickinson athletics or just Dickinson in general, whether it's on the field or off the field, I want to hear about that. Sounds cliche, man, but I got to say, it. Um, don't take anything for granted. I've, re I've really learned that this year. Um, I think all the, the seniors right now are learning that with their fall semester and everybody in general. Um, don't take anything for granted. Like, go, go play every game like it's your last. Like, you really don't know when it's going to end. And with everything being so unpredictable nowadays, like, you really have to take advantage of that. Obviously, we talked about a little bit, touching back in Dickinson, and Don mentioned the advice. Do you have, I mean, you can speak directly here to the Dickinson baseball team or just Dickinson students, Dickinson athletes coming in. Do you have any advice for them entering that um, athletic program besides the whole not taking anything for granted, just like how to succeed at Dickinson as a student athlete and how to kind of go about that at Dickinson? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's more than just Dickinson, but um, being a student athlete in general, it's, it's all about time management. And uh, if you want to succeed at Dickinson, you have to first be eligible. So if you're not taking care of your academics, how are you going to get on the field? Um, it's, it's really a two-way street. You got to be an athlete and you have to be a student at the same time. Um, at a D3 school where, you know, you're not given athletic money or anything, like you really have to make the most out of your academic experience there. Yeah, I think it's definitely something that a lot of people can – can take value from, especially for the young people who may have just had their freshman, even if they played in the fall, the first of their freshman year taken away, you know, freshman spring sport athletes that didn't get that full year in, uh, even sophomores, just like younger guys that like, you know, they think like, all right, like that's gone, but you know, I still have time left. Like, nah, like it, it, it goes by really quick. And that's something I've really know I've really taken, taken into account too, is like, tomorrow really isn't guaranteed, you know, you, we, you, you might not be able to step in the dirt again or step in the client again, uh, go out to D park again. And just like, it's those little things that go through my head to me, like, you know, like not being uh, like for the second half of August, not being at camp uh, and like, you know, missing those little things like, you know, waking up early, like the long days and like just goofing around in the locker room, things like that. Um, so, I mean, our hopes are that, 
this is going to clear up and we'll be able to have sports soon enough. But uh, I, ag- I agree with you completely uh, as a senior right now that like for the younger guys, like all those times that like you hate getting up early or you hate like going to practice or, you know, those, those things that you don't enjoy typically, like those are the things you're going to remember and miss the most for sure. Yeah, definitely. And I know we're, you know, stuck online. So I think maybe it'd be helpful for, you know, since we're going to be stuck on this online learning for a little bit to kind of talk about how you manage your time in the online world and how you manage that and balance that with being an athlete still and trying to get your work in and get your reps in. Yeah, it's been uh, really tough because as I mentioned, I'm taking six classes. Um, You know, Dickinson, we usually take four. And as a matter of fact, last semester, I only took three and only one of them was online. Um, so going from the spring to this fall right now has definitely been a rude awakening. I'm only a week and a half in. Um, it really is about just trying to be as efficient as, uh, you can possibly be with your time. I mean, you get a couple, you get a couple hours there, then I'm going to the park and I'm throwing into the fence like I have been all summer. Um, and then, you know, at night when you get home, like you eat dinner, you shower, do whatever you got to do, but you got to get a couple hours of work in, prepare for whatever's, uh, in class tomorrow and get your readings done. Absolutely. And was that so far, I mean, you mentioned it was definitely a rude awakening. I know you're only a week and a half in, like, how has that transition been? I know you were in a relatively, I mean, senior, senior spring usually isn't the hardest semester for everyone. Usually people bang out their, um, their major courses before that. So how has that transition been going from not only from Dickinson to UMass, but just from two different online worlds where teachers have way more time to prepare now for this online year than they did for the previous semester? Yeah, um, it's definitely difficult. I think uh, our professors have still been a little lenient with stuff. Like, um, it's it's definitely not going to be the same kind of experience and hands-on, like, intense. Um, but, I mean, you got to make the most of it. And these teachers have done a great job of preparing over the summer. Um, they all know how to work a Zoom and breakout rooms. Like, I feel like classroom discussions are almost just as effective, except it's just not in person. Um, but overall, it's been a pretty decent experience. It's more been about like the physical exhaustion of just sitting in front of a computer for five hours straight. Tommy, what's, uh, what's one thing that you miss about Dickinson? It's probably the calf food, right? Definitely not the calf food. <laughs> UMass has the number one ranked uh, calf in the country. So <laughs> by, by some, by some company. So it's definitely an upgrade. <laughs> so no, it's, all right. I was just making a joke there, but seriously, like if there's anything that like, there's something that like you miss, that's like, that'll give you nostalgia. You know, when you think about it, like, like, what's that one thing at Dickinson? I'm curious. Honestly, it's, it's something as little as walking around campus and just saying hi to somebody. I, I kind of miss, there's so many different people that I miss. And um, I talk about it all the time. Like, I really just didn't like the, the closure that we had with our class. We obviously have graduation next May, but uh, there's, there's no guarantee that, um, first off, there's no guarantee I'm going to, I'm going to be able to be there. There's no guarantee, you know, all of us are going to be there. So it's never going to be the same experience. And there's just a lot of people that I think about at Dickinson where I wish, you know, I just had one more night at alibis talking to them or something. Yeah. I got you, Tommy. Uh, I mean, unless, unless you guys had anything else. Uh, good, man. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I would just say maybe one more question, just like Dom asked, uh, what was your favorite memory in your Dickinson experience? And maybe more towards the athletic uh, realm. Like what was your favorite memory from being a Dickinson athlete? It's a tough one. You asking as a as a team like kind of thing. Well, I mean more you more you specifically. I think my favorite memory was uh, I won a push up competition as a sophomore, and I know that sounds really that's going to sound really weird to a lot of people, but like after I got up, like I was like almost seeing stars. Like I, it was a lot, and uh, everybody's up there just jumping and cheering for me, and and everybody was so excited and it was just like an it was within the team just a basic push-up competition but everybody was so fired up because Dickinson baseball has these competition Friday uh team lifts and we always kind of get pretty fired up for whoever wins and when the game's on the wire it's pretty fun so something like that just feeling the excitement from my teammates and just being around all the guys is definitely something I miss. Tommy we appreciate you having you on as our first guest we wish you the best of luck at Amherst and your baseball season. And, you know, we're going to miss you seeing around Carlisle, but we know you're going to do great things. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys.
Thanks, Tommy. Love you, brother. I have food over at UMass. <laughs> <laughs> and back into our final segment. Happy to have Tommy on, but that doesn't mean we don't have a little time for another Grazer ad read. Complex is something no coach or athlete wants to deal with, which is why every team aims to keep schemes and execution simple so success is easy to achieve. That's the game plan used by Grazer right here in Carlisle. Simple ingredients that are fresh, healthy, and above all, delicious. Healthy, not boring food that is not just good, but good for you. Made from only the healthiest ingredients and the simple ingredients. So come in today and enjoy a great meal made simple at Grazery. Located at 156 West High Street in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. That's it. So you guys, I know we, we just had Tommy Queedy on, a uh, former teammate of mine. Uh, what were you guys' biggest takeaways from, from him today? Honestly, the fact that his favorite thing was already a son, that, uh, that kind of <laughs> hit home. But um, I think his big takeaway was a lot of the advice he gave is definitely something a lot of people should take to heart. And some of the advice that Don gave as well in that whole little uh, discussion there, and just that you got to be efficient with your time and you can't take anything for granted. I feel like I felt the same thing. I went to a boarding high school as well. And the day I graduated, I did, really did feel like a snap of the fingers. It flew by and that kind of thing. you got to take every moment and realize just kind of how lucky you are because there's a lot of people who don't get to experience college, and let alone something as great as they consume. Yeah, for me, it was just talking to Tommy. I didn't know him too well. I didn't know him. I didn't really know him until like towards the second half of the latter half of my – or actually the beginning of my junior year, like most of my junior year, uh, latter half of my sophomore year. But – uh, one thing I always saw about Tommy was, you know, he was always – I would always see him in the cafeteria with the baseball team. Uh, he would always say what's up to me, like, even if I didn't know him that well. Uh, he was just like a very – seemed like a very team-oriented guy, a very personable guy. Uh, you know, if I saw him walking walking around on a Friday or Saturday night, you know, we would always talk and, you know, catch up a little bit. Um, and it was kind of like – I don't really remember the first time I met him, but, uh, like, we just gradually became friendly. And he was definitely – just seeing his stats and watching him play, he was very passionate about the game, uh, passionate about Dickinson baseball, just passionate about the school in general. And just, you know, you need those guys and you love to see those guys around campus, um, guys, girls, um, in every sport, you need, you need those kind of guys, you need those kind of leaders. So uh, he was a great leader and a great person. So, you know, I wish him all the best, but, uh, you know, definitely going to miss seeing him around campus for sure. Yeah, Tommy's the man. I mean, I was his teammate for, for two years, and there was no one who could, you know, have as much fun as him or no one who worked as hard as him either. Like, he had just like, the best of both worlds in that, in that aspect. He was, he was just really great to have around. He was a fantastic leader for our pitching staff. Uh, he was – and he was just a, a, like a dominant pitcher. He was disgusting. I, I used to love catching him. He's, he was really fun to catch because you could – I could tell him throw anything, and he could throw – throw wherever I, wherever I wanted and throw it. It was, it was awesome. Uh, but for me, the biggest takeaway from that interview, uh, he really took the bull by the horns, like this pandemic, like he just took, he took control of his situation and just made the best of it. Like he's now pitching for a division one program and he's in, he's getting his masters. He's really set, he really set himself up for success. And I think that's something that, you know, he did really, really well. And I'm very excited to see where he goes later in life. Yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame he's gonna miss out on the uh, that brand spanking new baseball facility. Maybe I know, uh, I know. Yeah, that's so sick. Yeah. Hope, hopefully, gets you guys in the playoffs. Oh yeah, it, we'll we'll get there. We'll get there. I'm not. I'm not even worried about it, Dom. I'm not even worried about it. Hey, man, I'm in the I'm in the same boat. We <laughs> you know, we uh, needless to say, we didn't we didn't close out the way we wanted to last year. So yeah, that's that's what's that's what's hurting me right now. That's what's hurting know, me by missing I this. I can't even imagine. Like especially like. For you, you got you just got your season canceled, and I I just can't even imagine how I would feel like if if we weren't if we weren't able to play like my especially for a senior year like I'm I'm really sorry about that man that just sucks like it's hey if uh, I might not be doing the Speak of the Devil podcast if uh, if I was playing football so that's really true you know that's, that's you gotta do I was able outlook. yeah you know, <laughs> I was able to start my own podcast uh, outside of this days with Dom check that out if you guys wanna. Some other content, and Glavin, you have a podcast too. Oh, yeah. um, mm-hmm. Wolves of Broad Street. So you know, there's there's these things that um, when one door shuts, another one opens. So you, you got to be aware. Of, you got to be see the opportunities, and you can't uh, you know you can't you can't really think of think of it for too long because if you just think, uh, it's less time that you're going to act upon. And even if you act upon something and it doesn't work out, you know, at least you tried that, and then you're on to the next thing. So 
you know, I've been keeping myself busy. I know it sucks. Like, like Tommy said, um, I think he, he, he framed everything kind of perfectly. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, it really sucks, but you, you know, you, you take it with a grain of salt, you swallow, you have to swallow that pill. You know, you didn't get to finish the senior season, but like, like I said, like another door opened for him and coach Hanson, you know, that's the kind of coaches we have at Dickinson is if, if it's not going to be the best fit for him, it wasn't the best fit for him to come back to Dickinson. We don't have a grad program. So mm -hmm. coach Hanson was on the phone with uh, other coaches because he knew how good of a player and how good of a person he was and how much value he could be to another program and such an, and how, how much of an asset he is. So that's, uh, so the, a great thing we that we have about Dickinson and our coaching staff is that, you know, they care about us, you know, outside of just being on the field or being on the court or, you know, whatever in the pool, whatever it may be, they care about us beyond that. And they want to see us succeed, you know, beyond the steps of old, once we leave the steps of old West. Yeah, absolutely. And just reflecting on, you know, I had, you know, through RDSN and then I spent a lot of time with the baseball program, especially doing um, the Dickens Diamond freshman year and then broadcasting almost every game my freshman year when he was having his incredible year junior year. I know he had, you know, he was player of the week and all that stuff. And I got a lot of my first taste of broadcasting baseball through broadcasting him. And I'll say it's very easy when you're calling a strike every other, if not <laughs> like percent of the time. And, you know, he was three, four guys in the last inning and that was it. And he uh, made sure I was on time to go, go do my homework after broadcasting. So yep. made my life good and easy. And, but he, as you guys touched on, he re really is a, a real great guy and um, definitely a perfect guy to bring on as our first guest. Mm -hmm. Sure. And we're, uh, you know, it was a great episode with Tommy. Like we said, we can't say enough uh, good things about him. I think he really mirrors the image of, you know, and his real good representation of what like a Dickinson athlete like is for the most part, like, you know, he's always taking one for the team. And like Sam, like you said, and like Tommy said, like he had a, he had a pretty serious like elbow injury and he wasn't even playing. And, but, you know, you guys had the whole, you guys weren't even back in Carlisle playing yet. You weren't even playing in conference. He had a whole season ahead of him. And, you know, just like that, but even as he wasn't playing, like you said, he was such a team leader and like, even though he wasn't playing, he was such a positive presence and he made everyone around him better. And, you know, that's the kind of people that we're going to be interviewing uh, like down the road is like these kind of people, alumni, uh, students, staff that just make everyone around them better. They're not in it for themselves. They're in it for the greater good. And, you know, at the end of the day, just honored to wear the red and honored to have to wear the red and both have worn the red and just, you know, to foster growth and success through every program. Yeah, That's it, man. That's it. Now you guys want to transition to the, the fun part of the show. Um, Absolutely. We're going to do our Can't own wait. fun segment. Um, let Sam take it away. All right. So this week I'm going to be bringing you um, my top five quarterbacks in the NFL this year. Uh, every week I'm going to do something different. You know, like if you guys have any suggestions of what you want me to, to rank, like it can be anything. It doesn't, have, it doesn't even have to be sports if you don't want to. So um, but this week I am gonna I'm gonna go with uh, top five quarterbacks in the NFL. Um, starting off at number one, I'm gonna go for the for the top. I'm gonna go Patrick Mahomes. You know he's just been such a force in the NFL. He's a crazy. He one of probably the best athlete in the NFL right now. Uh, number two, Russell Wilson. He's got that experience and he's still every every year to this to this day kills my Eagles every year and it is it's really tough to watch but he is just a fantastic quarterback number three i got drew Brees. you know he's got that experience as well he's got a ring and uh you know i'm um, the fact that he is able to do the things that he does you know like he's probably one of the smallest quarterbacks in the nfl but still performs every game like it's his last and he's been doing it for years number four i'm going with my boy carson wentz have to He's the man. Uh, he's gonna lead. He's gonna lead my team to another Super Bowl at some point in his career. The way he eludes people in the pocket, the way he can get passes down the field, he's just so good. And then number five, I'm gonna have to go Lamar Jackson. He's the reigning uh, the reigning league MVP. Um, I'm not totally convinced on Lamar Jackson, but I had to give him props for winning the MVP last year. He was very very good uh, with his legs and also throwing it. So. Um, if you guys want to respond, that would be – we'll see where it goes. Go ahead, though. <laughs> All right. I can see Sam. Uh, Sam, a little bit a little bit questionable with uh, Glavin's picks there, but, you know, whatever. To each his own. So, 
I'm going to be doing something each week, highly questionable, something you didn't know in sports, something kind of ridiculous. You know, it might not always be in sports, but, you know, I'm going to bring you something that's just kind of absurd that's going on right now uh, each week. So today, by the time you guys hear this, uh, about a week has passed, so you might hear about it. But uh, David Blaine, I know a lot of you know him. He's one of the most famous and freakish magicians of all time he attached himself to 52 colorful helium balloons and floated across the desert in arizona at like an insane altitude uh it might reminds me of the movie up if any of you guys have seen the movie up <laughs> which carries the entire you know house up to whatever island there but david blaine you're nuts you're a freak but it was pretty cool. So uh, if you haven't seen that by now, by the time this episode released, check that out. He literally is floating thousands of feet in the air, holding that's helium nuts. balloons. I had no idea that that was even going on. That's crazy. Like a psycho. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's your, uh, what, what, what's weird thing that's going on right now. <laughs> Real life Mr. Fredrickson going to <laughs> balls there. Right, exactly. Honestly, Sam, the only one I disagreed with you is your number four. I think Sean Watson deserves more credit, but we'll, absolutely we'll, not. We'll, we'll leave that. We'll leave. Didn't that. he tear his ACL? No, not this. Oh. Year. Well, yeah. I'm a Colts fan, and I'm saying that. Which oh, should... well, never mind. I need. Mm, I, I'm out of the loop. I'm out of the loop. I got to give it to Carson Wentz, man. He's uh, obviously. I might be. I might be a little biased. Like I get it. Like I. I get that I have my own Philadelphia sports podcast. By the way, um, it's called the Wolves of Broad Street. Go check it out. It's with me and my my cousin, our boy from high school. We talk all things Philly sports, uh, Flyers, Eagles, Sixers, Phillies. You know, it's it's a great time, and we have a couple of fun segments like we do in this episode as well. So, if you guys check that out, that would be sweet. Yeah, and uh, to wrap it up. I'm gonna be giving you my hot take of the week. Uh, my hot take is that neither one seed is going to make the NBA Finals. You're going to see the Bucks and Lakers not make the NBA Finals. And I'm going to go further and say the Bucks will not make the Eastern Conference Finals. I think the Heat are going to take them in probably six games. I kind of agree with you there, man. I, I'm not going to lie. The Heat are looking hot right now. They look good. They uh, And Jimmy Butler's been going off for sure. Um, and I don't want to hear – And after this is done, I don't want to hear anything about – Giannis being the best player in the NBA right now if he doesn't make the Eastern Conference Finals this year. That's all, that's all I'm going to say on that. I mean, the Heat had a perfect defensive plan in the game one to shut down Giannis. Granted, uh, Chris Milton had a heck of a game. He went off. But, I mean, if yeah. you stop the MVP, largely considered the unanimous number one, I think your yeah. defense and your team deserves a lot of credit. Mm -hmm. uh, in the finals, though, I do think it's going to be Celtics Clippers. That's my prediction. A little biased for the Celtics, but they've also been yeah. just as hot as the Heat. So throw that one in there. Yeah, they definitely put a hurting on my Sixers. That's that's for sure. That was insanely tough to watch. So the sign I gotta give it to the Celtics. They look really good. Beat the Raptors handily in the first two games. So and they swept the Sixers too. So it's they're looking good, what? man. They're looking I'll good. Tell you what? I'm looking forward. I'm I'm hopeful for some Centennial Conference basketball. That's what I'm really looking forward to. Hopefully, we'll have that. Absolutely. Next semester. But, um, you know, not, not a whole lot of word on that so far. But looking mm -hmm. forward to uh, being back, getting the client rocking. So, 100%. Is that it for all of us? I think we're yeah, for good me, man. For this week. Good. Yeah. Absolutely. You want to send us home, Dom? Yeah. So, everybody, as you know, this was our first official podcast with segments, with a guest. Obviously, you know, it wasn't as smooth as, you know, it was, it was the first one. We had a lot of fun. You know, we're going to go back and we're going to watch game film. We're going to listen to it. Right, and, man. you know, we're going to make adjustments just like in a sports game. And, you know, we're going to come back uh, ready to roll next week. And, again, we are completely open to new ideas, of new segments, guests, uh, you know, anything else. So uh, make sure to follow us on any social media reach out to us, let us know what you like, what you didn't like, how we can make this better and just make it more of an enjoyable experience, listening experience, viewing experience going forward, because it's all about you guys. It's all about the community. That's it. 100%. Thanks for listening, everybody. Peace. Hold up.